Hello and welcome. My name is Sanjay Soni. Here is Tony to talk about how to debug applications built on Azure Cosmos DB using telemetry. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Now, let's get started. Hi, Tony. How are you doing today? Great, Sanjay. Thanks for having me in. Thanks for coming in. Uh, so what do you do at Microsoft? I'm the principal dev lead manager for security and performance for Cosmos DB. All right, so what is telemetry and how does it relate to metrics and monitoring? So telemetry is a catch-all name for metrics and monitoring. It refers to the data collected. And for our purposes, we're going to talk about logging and metrics. Logging is based on events um, that happen in the system and is a type of monitoring. For example, when a developer requests uh, a key from the database, that particular event is actually logged out um, and persisted that we could look at it later. Um, whereas metrics, on the other hand, are values that are output at a sampling interval, something like number of documents read per second. So I've heard telemetry is about two things, right? What is collected and where it is collected. So can you please tell me more about where this data is collected? Sure, um, and before I jump into that, um, in terms of what's collected, I actually had on this slide uh, the first bug that ever happened in computer software. It was actually a moth pulled out of a mock, uh, Mark II computer uh, by Grace Hopper. And uh, it was actually the, where sort of where the popularity of uh, the term debugging came from. So uh, in terms of what's collected and where it's collected, we really have two ways of thinking about this particular problem. Um, we think about it in terms of control plane and data plane. Um, control plane operations are sort of the meta operations. These are the things that happen about the database, but not particularly the data. So things like setting a firewall or a VNet, whereas the data plane is really about things that you're doing to the data. Um, SQL people would think of these as like a DML and DDL. Oh yes, data manipulation, data, data definition. Yes. Okay. So do you have an example of a control plane operation? I do. Um, so I have a, a pre-created Cosmos DB account here, and an example of a control plane operation would show up in what's called the activity log. Um, and so I'll click the activity log here, um, and what you'll see come up are the different types of operations I've done in the last uh, couple of hours. Mm -hmm. um, and in particular, something like list keys, where I actually ask for the keys to the database, um, and this gives us pretty good insight into what type of things are actually happening. All right, so what about the data plane operations? Yeah, unlike the control plane operations, the data planes involve uh, logging of specific events that happened. Um, and so let me flip back here. Uh, and here what I'm showing is the uh, diagnostics panel that hap that's in Cosmos DB, and this is how you actually turn on the data plane operations. Um, there's a rich set of capabilities here where you can log out to, say, a storage account, um, or you can log out to log analytics, you can set your retention policies, um, and in addition to sort of collecting the uh, logging events, you can also collect the metrics, um, which we'll cover in a little bit. So this looks really interesting. So how do you look at the data once it's actually collected? Yeah, uh, great question. So what we typically do, and, and what I like to use, is what's called log analytics, and on the Configuration, I had turned it on, and here I have a sample query of what log analytics looks like. We can say from Azure Diagnostics, where my client IP, um, which is this IP here, some random IP, uh, has sent some number of uh, requests to Cosmos DB. They actually get logged in the log. And on this next slide here, what I can actually show you is an example of what this actually looks like when it comes out in log analytics. I see. And what you can see is a rich set of capabilities around specifically what was the operation that was performed, in this case a read, who was authorized to do the request. You can see it took, you know, it returned about 1.4K of data uh, in about um, roughly three milliseconds. Wow. So you get a lot of data out of this. So it looks like there's a rich set of data provided in these logs. What if all I want is an overview of what's going on for my application or service? Logs are really helpful if you know what you're looking for, but yes, if you're trying to get an overview of the system, what you really need are what are called metrics. And the metrics give you an idea of things like throughput and latency that are happening on the system. Um, they give you uh, ideas of like what kind of return codes are coming back to your application or your service. Um, in this case, like a, a 404 uh, would be concerning because it's a document not found. 
I see. So over here, I actually see a small snippet, right, of a matrix graph. Is there a dashboard behind all this? Yes, there is. So let me switch over to the dashboard here. Um, and so for the metrics dashboarding, let me click the overview. So here's an example of the overall dashboard, and this gives us um, the insight into the metrics. And so one of the things that I had here um, on the screen are requests that were flowing to the system. Um, and at some point, something really interesting happened, and a large amount of data started flowing um, right here. So we have a spike, and this would be interesting, and tells us where we should go look, um, and around what time we should look inside the logs. And so if you're trying to actually narrow down, um, this is how you do it. You take it from the metrics. So how does all of this come together to debug an issue? Great, let's go take a, a quick example here. So imagine you have a stock portfolio application, um, and an event like we just saw happen where we had this big spike, and what we want to do is we actually want to go and diagnose the problem. So what we would do is we'd start just like we had talked about. We'd start very broad with metrics, um, and then we'd narrow into, into the monitoring logs. And so here I'll start very broad, and one of the cool things you can do in the dashboard is I can turn on and off different types of events, so I can click them. One that I can see here in this graph that was popping up is this thing called a 429. Um, and this 429 is interesting because it's saying we're exceeding what the service is able to provide for us. And so what I, what I did here is um, I took the 429, I can come over here to the Azure logging uh, and the analytics blade that we talked about earlier. And what I wanna do is zoom in on specifically a 429 request which I can do right here, the status code. I can hit this apply and run the query. And what we get out of this is we get a much richer set of data to actually go in and debug what's going on with the service. Turns out 429, it's really clear we're just exceeding what the service can actually do for us. Um, and from here, what we can do is we can increase um, the RUs. This is the, the value of sort of work that Cosmos DB does for you. So we go and we increase RUs. And after this, um, you could see back on the overview pane, I went in, I increased RUs, and we were back down to very consistent and fast requests. Wow, that's fascinating. Thank you so much for sharing all this information with us, and thanks for being here with us today. And thank you, Sanjay, for letting me share debugging, monitoring metrics with you. Awesome. Thank you for watching this microlearning readiness video about Azure Cosmos DB. To learn more about this and other topics, please go to azure.com forward slash Cosmos DB. Please stay tuned for more videos.